whatever has gone before doesn't matter. This is a brand new start. This year is whatever you want it to be. We're going to share some ideas for how to have your best property year ever. Every year should start with deciding what you want or setting out your goals. Yeah, so important. Firstly, make sure that they are smart. The shortcut version of that is make sure that it's really clear. Try and put a number on it, make it something that you'll know when you've achieved it rather than, oh, I want to get rich this year. And secondly, write them down. Writing down your goals forces you to get clearer about them. And there's also some kind of magic in actually writing something down, especially if you then put it somewhere visible and review them often. So that's the real basics of goals. But Rob, when you are coming up with goals, something you mentioned when we were talking before, that's important to get right is having themes for your goals. So at the beginning of the year, break your goals down into themes. So it can be wealth creation or property specifically. It could be fitness. It could be spirituality. It could be family. It could be adventures. The list is up to you. There is no set list that you must work to. Some of the themes will not be of interest to you and some that I've not mentioned will be really important to you. I've just given you a few examples. Once you've done the themes, then try and add at the beginning of the year some goals in each section. Even if that particular section isn't as important to you at the beginning of the year, just so you can make some progress against them. And then what is really useful is to then look at it month by month and go, okay, what's one action I can take against these goals this month? So by breaking it down into themes and then breaking it down month by month and at the end of each month stopping and going okay what am I going to do next month to progress this goal that action alone that process that I've just described will make your year far more successful than most years you've had before if you've not done it before it really really does work because you're focusing on making progress each and every month and spoiler if you have lots of themes and lots of goals you're not going to hit them all but if you do this you will hit far more than you would have if you just listed a few goals at the beginning of the year and then did nothing else. Definitely. And if you do have them broken down into steps like that, then it means you're always going to be working on your goals. And another way to help that is to keep your goals visible. Because even if your goal is so important to you, there's no chance that you're going to forget that you're meant to be doing it. There's something about just looking at your goal often. And something else that I find really helpful is distinguishing between event goals and process goals. So where possible, if you can take an event goal and turn it into a process goal, that then makes it feel a lot less intimidating. It's also something that you're naturally going to work on more consistently. So loads of little tips there about goals. Having goals is important. Setting good goals and the right goals and doing it in the right way is far better than doing what most people do, which is having like vague, ill-defined, poorly thought through goals. Even if you've got great goals, that is only the very first step of the process. You need to do more than that. Oh, you do. And we've got much more to give you. Starting with reviewing. It could be reviewing your goals, as we've mentioned already, but just a reflection review. So looking back and going, okay, what have I achieved? Now, there are so many different ways to do this. So one example I've given you already is at the end of each month, looking back, okay, what have I achieved that month? What progress have I made? And then setting your goals for the following month. But it could be a daily reflection. What you choose can be up to you, but by reviewing your progress at a set frequency is really powerful, particularly if you can look at lessons as well. Yes, looking at what you've achieved is great and it will motivate you to carry on. So by disciplining yourself to stop and take reviews at a set period of time, is really, really powerful. So reviews are something that you do every so often. Maybe it's weekly, maybe it's monthly, can be whatever you want it to be. But there's something else that you can do on a daily basis, which is tracking your habits. And habits are really important because it's a bit like the process goals I talked about earlier. Because if you get the habits right, the little micro behaviours that you do all the time just gets taken care of automatically. Because it's easy to have intentions, but unless you're conscious about what you want to be doing and you track it, you will drift off course. But having it as something that you need to tick off every day, it's basic, but it's really powerful. When you've got a streak going, especially if it's in an app that looks nice and it makes it really visible and you've been doing for something for three weeks, you're not going to want to miss a day because it will break your streak and you'll feel really bad about it. So by doing that, by having the tracking in place, it's a way of staying accountable to yourself. And that is powerful, but accountability, Rob, doesn't just have to be to yourself. Accountability sounds simple. And you know what? It's because it is. But the simple can be incredibly powerful. And this is why you see accountability work in so many different areas. 
Having a business partner, for example, makes you accountable. Now, it can be done in so many different ways. It can be someone you pay or it can be something informal. You can just work with other people that you meet in networking groups and tell them what you're going to do that week and then deliver upon it and go back and tell them you've done it. That's an informal way of staying accountability because you're publicly sharing your goals on what you're going to do that week. Then you run the risk that someone's going to ask you how it went. You can find mentors that you don't have to pay for. People who are just more experienced, who love what they do, and this applies to property and beyond, who want to help you. It might be a friend or a family member who's further on a particular subject that you want to be good at. And yes, Rob, you can pay for it as well. And working with experts is really powerful. So if you can get that magic combo of accountability plus expert knowledge, that can be super powerful. And I think this sums it up. A little bit of effort goes a long way. There are no secrets. Like the simple stuff is there. The secrets to success aren't secrets. Okay, you're not gonna become a billionaire in the first year of doing this, but I tell you what, if you do all we've talked about for 10 years, then you are gonna be in a very special place in a decade's time. Take this, do something with it and progress and become a better version of yourself. These are the tools. Go and use them and have an amazing 2022.